It's that time again. It's time for another Saturday night special where we talk about everything rock hunting related. There's a lot of good in this lapidary world, this world that we inhabit, rocks, minerals, cutting, polishing, that thing. And there's also, as of late, it really feels like there's a lot of bad. We're going to be talking about both of those subjects tonight. Last week's Saturday, Saturday night special, uh, we talked a little bit about cutting edge supply, kind of, well, for lack of a better term, screwing people over, uh, where people are buying stuff and getting ghosted, not getting product. I actually heard from a, a pretty significant number of people after that video last week, people saying they were disputing their PayPal charges, a lot of things, and it's very disappointing to see that. That kind of on the the extreme end of of it because they're really kind of hurting the community of lapidaries and rock hounds, me and you. On the other hand of things, there's some incredibly nice and generous people. Thankfully, they make up the majority. They definitely make up the majority. And you know, I often uh, get tunnel vision with this stuff, and I forget I forget how good some people are you know i just kind of have like nose down make the videos <laughs> i forget that people actually watch them you know i mean i, I talk to the camera but it, there's not a whole lot of you know two-way back and forth here the youtube channel got mentioned in a newsletter this past week um which is very very nice to see um the east kootenai newsletter, paleo newsletter, uh, which is cool that they I got lumped in with a bunch of really excellent channels is a good resource. And, you know, the, the, the videos here have gotten played in uh, rock clubs, in universities. There's a couple of colleges that use some of uh, my videos as examples. Hopefully uh, not examples of what not to do, but what to do. <laughs> uh, so there are a lot of excellent people out there. They're just there there is and you know one thing that has really gotten under my skin this week is a company that you are probably very familiar with they make these things which we have talked about this happens to be an mk 303 lapidary blade and well you're not going to see many of these anymore because mk mk diamond went out of business you're hearing me right they went out of business and not in a very good way in probably one of the worst ways possible well so here's the deal with them as far as i can tell um they got evicted they got evicted from their commercial space and all of their machines got uh auctioned off and they definitely screwed over probably some of their wholesalers probably some customers somewhere along the lines and as i've looked more into this company i'm like oh oh um they uh this, this should hopefully boil boil your uh, blood a little bit it did mine uh so mk mk diamond the makers of this blade right here which is a perfectly fine blade but it's not as good as what people generally say do you remember the ppp loans do you remember those it was the relief loan for covid you uh, could apply for it, and it was to be able to pay your employees' salary so they didn't lose their jobs. And tons and tons of companies took advantage of it. I'm not saying that MK did. I'll let you make up your own mind when I share the numbers with you. So, MK received two loans from the government, my money, your money, uh, that was forgiven at, to the tune of $835,000 times two. So $1.6 million dollars they reported as having 82 jobs and the way the ppp loans were calculated it's basically average monthly cost of salaries or you can look at it like your gross income divided by 12 and that would be like what you would gross monthly income so wait a second you're saying that mk a relatively small fabrication shop in california torrance california had 82 employees and now this is of course average you know dividing it up it's definitely not going to be like that that would mean the average employee if all of those 82 people were making the same amount of money was ten thousand one hundred and eighty two dollars per month which is not which is not 
True, that's also like, you know, there's gonna be employees that make very little, all the way up to the owner, and you're saying that your payroll, the payroll over, over there, is 835000 a month? I don't buy it. Now, there's plenty of articles out there of companies that had totally taken advantage of the PPP loan system and just got money and lied about employees and lied about all kinds of stuff. Now, I'm not saying that's what MK did, but it's certainly suspicious to hear that they uh, stated that they pull a monthly salary of $835,000 which just blows my mind. And you know, like they got evicted out of their commercial space in California, a state that generally puts a lot of uh, like rights or whatever, like on tenants and not landlords. So you, for you to get, for you to get kicked out, they had to have been going a long time, not paying that rent while selling things or collecting money for orders that are never going to go out now. It's shameful. It is, there are just way too many lapidary companies that are perfectly fine, like, screwing people over these days. And I just, it is just, it blows my mind. It, it really, like, they're dead. That, that company is gone. This is a company that's been around for decades and decades and decades. And the other thing that calls, calls into question here, Baranka Diamond, BD. Um, they are under MK. You know, they make the blue saws and all that. What about them? Are they now belly up as well? They still have their website up. Uh, they're not answering their phone. Phone's disconnected. I tried calling them a couple of times. I just... <laughs> um, you know what? Here's the thing. I want to have good, co good companies uh, in the lapidary space. But at this point, I'm ready to throw up my hands and be like, you know what we should all do? We should all email Harbor Freight Tools and be like, hey, start making lapidary equipment. Uh, just Let's just like quickly accelerate the end game and just be like, how great would it be to roll on down to Harbor Freight at this point after dealing with all these companies and just pick up that 24-inch saw? Oh, you got a problem with it? Cool. You could just like, you know, come back on in and, uh, you know, grab another one, return it. I would prefer that at this point. I would. If like... We can't have uh, good, responsible, solid companies made in America producing cool products. Well, then let's just go the opposite end and be like, let's just do Harbor Freight. Let's just do Harbor Freight. Why not? <sighs> well, it's not all bad, everybody. It's not all bad. I would like to share with you a quote that has been living rent-free in my mind for the past couple of weeks. And it is from something that I really, really love. Now, I love the Lapidary Journal, and this is a quote from the founder of Lapidary Journal, Leland Quick. The Lapidary Journal is launched with the high hope that it will influence thousands of people in the years to come learn, to learn the richly satisfying experience of doing something with their hands, of creating deathless things of beauty. Now that right there, that is a founder. That is a le the voice of somebody that is a cultural community uh, thought leader of his time. And we don't, <laughs> I feel like sometimes we don't have that anymore. We just, you know, it, ah, man. Speaking of deathless beauty of things. Let's look at some rocks. We're almost 10 minutes into this. We gotta talk about some rocks here. I uh, did a little bit of cutting, no polishing, but check this guy out. This, uh, so I've had bad luck with Brazilian agates. They just, me and Brazilian agates are, <laughs> we're like, we're a little oil and water over here. And I finally uh, cut one that is free of cracks. No cracks at all. I'm uh, looking forward to getting this guy all polished up. Yeah, we got a little bit of water line in the bottom there, and then uh, we got a little uh, quartz crystal pocket. I mean, I'm I'm happy with that one. That's a good Brazilian, in my opinion. A little more water on that. Yeah, I just have not had good luck with these. You know, I cut them, and there's like 
a big old fracture running through them and, and thing, things like that. So happy to have one now that I can polish up and be like, hey, I got one. <laughs> I got one now. I found a rock that I would like some help with. Now, I, uh, I know exactly what it is. We're not doing identification here, but I'm, it's interesting to me. Now, this is a piece of common opal, or just opal. We need to say that. And uh, my question is, so here we have, and this is from Washington, by the way, we have opal with some kind of mineralization in the bottom, like it's kind of uh, those little black spots. We have this band, all right, we got that band right there, and then uh, just kind of more, more opal. But the band is what I'm curious about. You can see that it has a curve to it, like it's like formed around something. And I have never ever seen this formation where we get this like opal forming and there's like almost different stages of formation, I guess. <laughs> and I I have I'm curious what the geological uh how to say this? I'm curious what the situation was on the geo geologic terms that would create opal and then a different type of opal and then a different type of opal, but it's like a like nucleating around a, a ball, if if you will, and we have that weird curvature because I mean, if you follow that around, it's like going around, assuming that's what happened. But anyways, I I am on. I I have looked at every resource that I have. Uh, on opal, and I have not found anything that can really uh, explain what it is that I am seeing here. So, off to the hive mind, everybody. <laughs> I, please feel free to chime in. The beautiful vintage Mineralite M12. Maybe you saw it, maybe you didn't. But, uh, yeah, you know, this uh, is an interesting little uh, old-timey UV light. Now, it, it kind of, I wish that wasn't, like, I wish I could fix that somehow, the crinkle paint. Uh, things just aren't made like this anymore, you know? I love this, like, rock hounding and lapidary history. It means a lot to me. And it's a shame. I just, I feel like... I want to, I guess I want, I want to time travel. I want to time travel back to when, you know, we had lapidary journal, uh, to when, you, you know, things were made in metal boxes, to when, um, things were just like a totally quality thing. There wasn't companies taking $1.6 million loans, uh, and, uh, running their businesses into the ground, you know, it, it just, you know, I, here's the thing. If I got $1.6 million, I would open a mineral museum with an attached reading room and, like, some type of, like, lapidary community, like, workspace. That's what I would do with the, the money. What they did with the money was kick the can down the road and go file for bankruptcy and uh, screw over their landlord and what else? Have all their stuff taken and liquidated. I'm not saying I want $1.6 million, but I'm saying I'd do something better with it <laughs> than them. Um, uh, yeah, I want things like this in my life. Um, this is a perfectly good functioning light. Maybe you saw the video on it. Maybe you didn't see the video on it. Either way, that's totally cool. Let's hit the lights. <laughs> I love it. That hum. And I do have a rock here, of course. You see that MK right there? Yeah, look at that. So this is a piece of willamite and calcite. And, uh, yeah, you know. Look at the big slab. I'll show you the slab here when uh, we're done looking at that. But, yeah, you know, uh, how many products that you own, do you own today, made and designed in the last couple of years, that will still be around and functioning in 80 years, you know? Uh, so, what would that be, like, 20, 2104? I mean, uh, 2105? 
I feel like very, very few, very few. That's what that slab looks like. I guess you're kind of looking at it in that orientation. Kind of a uh, kind of meh, <laughs> which that's uh, that's the fun part about UV stuff, right? Like eh, you can't really see. It's a little too bright in here with all the lights, but uh, you know. I just want to have access to the things that I need to create that deathless beauty. Well, thanks for coming by, everybody. Listen in to me rant about things. <laughs> if you have any thoughts on that opal, I would love to hear it. And uh, with that said, we will leave this one here. And I will catch you in the next video.